Good morning, everyone, and God bless you. We want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad to have you with us, those in the sanctuary, those in the drive-in church, in your car, 97.7 FM, those on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. We're all together, amen. And we're going to have an awesome time today. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for his goodness to us, his mercy to us. I know that something great is going to happen. I want to give God praise for all of the wonderful things that he's been doing. Just a little bit later. Go ahead. Somebody wants to praise the Lord. I can't wait to share with you a little bit later on a special video that will be coming up of the outreach, an amazing Summer of Salvation, Day of the Cross outreach that took place yesterday. That's coming up a little bit later. And by the way, we've got some more graduates we're going to honor. Do you know we're approaching honoring 100 graduates? Isn't that awesome? Let's give them a hand as well. God is so, so good. But the most exciting thing I believe is that God is answering prayer. Offices are getting responses, calls coming in, people saying, I want to thank you for letting me share my prayer request. You see, when you share your prayer request, what you're doing is you're putting action on your faith. The Bible says that faith with action can cause a reaction from God. And you might say, you know what, I'd love to get my prayer request in today. I want to literally get them in my hand. Every prayer request that comes in, they're going to get it in my hand. We've got an awesome team of sisters right over here to my left ready to take your prayer request. Praise God for them and all of our team here today. Now, here's how you do it. You can go to Faith City Family Church Facebook, and you can go to the comment section. So you can still watch us live. Go to the comment section. Leave your request. If it's uh, extremely personal, you can go to this in message section. But again, Faith City Family Church, Facebook, it's the uh, comment section, or send message. And then YouTube, the chat section. I believe when we pray today, you might say, you mean if I do it now, you're going to get my prayer request? I'm going to get it right now over the next few minutes. And how many believe God's going to do some miracles? God's going to do some healings. God's going to do some turnarounds. And you might say, why are you so passionate about that? Well, I'm looking over in this section of the church, and I can see, I won't we'll call any names, never going to do that, but I see a brother that he had to go into the hospital for a procedure, and I see him standing on both legs. He's back in church. God is good, and if God can bless him, I know God can do it for you. Let's stretch our hands out to one another. We're going to pray. Those in church, those on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, those in the drive-in church. Father, in the name of Jesus, we believe today that your power is greater than anything we're up against. Lord, for that person who's fighting illness, that person, Lord, who doesn't know how they're going to pay their bills, Lord, that person who has children and grandchildren, a loved one, a friend, that's really going through it. Father, I pray that people will say, you know what? I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be just a spectator. I'm going to be a participator of faith. And I'm going to that Faith City Family Church Facebook, to the comment section or the send message section. I'm going to the YouTube, the chat section, and I'm going to show God I believe if I get my request in and God's people pray that something good is going to happen. God, I, I pray for everybody in the sanctuary and in your car. You'll get whatever miracle that you may need for yourself and for your family. And God will give you praise and we'll thank you for it. We decree and declare that this is a miracle service. Can somebody shout amen right now? Come on, somebody give the Lord a loud praise. God, we believe miracles are going to happen this day. We're so happy to have with us today Sister Michelle Thompson, who will lead us in worship. Whether you're here, wherever you're at, make your joyful noise unto the Lord. Let's have a great time together, family. Give the Lord one more shout. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord, Faith City family. Where are my light holders? Are you here this morning? We're going to shine our lights bright so when we go into the world, they'll know that we're kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Everyone that I meet, I can give a smile, smile. 
And everywhere I see you need, I go the extra mile, yeah. Everybody's looking for change, but who will take the lead, yeah, yeah. The change that I want to see is going to start with me. Everyone that I meet, everyone that I meet, I can give a smile, smile. Looking for change, oh yeah, the change that change I wanna, I wanna see. see. There's a light in me, yeah. Something great will happen, and I use my. We are, we are kingdom, and we have authority. God has given us the power, and we.
let's clap those hands. Oh, clap those hands. Oh, clap those hands. If you're thankful for his grace, let me see you just clap those hands. Oh, yeah, clap those hands. Oh, clap those hands. If you're thankful for his grace, let me see you just clap those hands. Oh, oh clap those hands. So good. in your love and you being God almighty to us thank you Lord God almighty Lord of glory oh we worship Glory, oh, we worship you. 
Amen, Michelle. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all people unto me. And when you're worshiping the Lord, you're saying, you know what? I know that God is bigger than anything I'm facing today. And I'm going to put it all in the hands of Jesus. How many know that you can put it in his hands? Can I hear an amen? You can, you can put it in the hands of the Lord. And we're getting ready to... Uh, pray for every prayer need, every prayer request that is not only in the sanctuary, but also that is coming in on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Maybe you just tuned in. You're just joining us. It's not too late to get your prayer request in live right now. I want to get it in my hand. Go to Faith City Family Church Facebook 
the comment section or if it's very personal, the send message section. Those of you watching on YouTube, the chat section. And our prayer ministry team is watching their screens right now to get your prayer request. I want to look around in the sanctuary. How many by the raising of a hand could say, Pastor, the Lord has done miracles in my life in my journey, I've had some miracles. Would you raise your, I mean, I would say 99% of the hands in this service are going up right now. People saying God has done a miracle. And I can say, and I'm so thankful in every section, I see miracles. I see a miracle. Amen. I, I see a miracle over here. I, I see a miracle in this section. I do. I see a miracle over here. And if God did it for them, I know that God can do it for you today. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now that something is about to happen. I want to ask Brother Harmon, our outreach director, if he would come at this time with any requests that have come in thus far and bring our prayer ministry request box. You see, I want, if BK could, to take you on a little B-roll here of hundreds of requests. What we did, we, we took the requests that came in and we kind of spread them out on a table. We didn't realize that so many requests had come in. I want you to see this right now. That, that's like three or four inches deep. There must be over one. This is just in the last few weeks. We only started streaming about four and a half months ago. That's all. That's when we started. But we have literally now over, I believe, 1,500 prayer requests that have come in people saying I want somebody to believe with me for a miracle and the good news is this God is answering prayer God is turning it around God is healing people why because Jesus said as your faith so be it unto you would you let Jesus see your faith today that's exactly what you're doing brother Harmon do we have some requests thank you my brother now, those in the church, we're going to be praying over you in just a moment. Thank you, Brother Harmon. God bless you. This says, pray for me and my mom, mom, Sharon, my big cousin, Dre, and my little cousin, Ajay. God bless you. Sharon, Lord, keep my grandson, Robert Miller, in prayer. He's so faithfully looking for employment I decree and declare a job is coming his way in the name of Jesus this says a uh, pray for Ava this came from the Kings Park area yes we will Adrian Anderson please pray for the Pharrell McNeil and Anderson family this says from Russell please pray for my aunt Chanti who is battling cancer Myself, I have lower right abdomen pain, awaiting a CT scan, praying for a good report. In the name of Jesus, cancer, you've got to go, and we're believing for a miracle report. Annette Collier, please pray for complete healing for Sonia Delton, Gina, Jody, and Candy. It's not too late to get in your prayer request. Go to Faith City Family Church Facebook the comment or send message section, YouTube, the chat section. Diana Charleston, pray for the people in Philly who've lost loved ones to violence. Yes, we will. We need to pray against all this violence, and we're going to do that. Sandra Fisher Nixon, pray for Faith City Church and Pastor Hare. Pray for healing for my leg pain. Thank you for that shout out, and we're believing for God to heal your leg. Terry. Terry Wood, please pray for complete healing for my son, Warner. Colia, please pray for my niece. She got a report that she has cancer, but she's trusting God, and she is standing on the Word of God. Amen. So pray for her. Somebody give a shout of praise right now. I'm thanking God for all these, these uh, faith-filled requests. Here's a praise report from Paul. Last week, we asked for prayer for David, who had been diagnosed with COVID-19. He has recovered and is back with his family. Praise God. I'm telling you, we're getting these praise reports. Get your prayer request in. Thank you, Brother Harmon. Eddie Lang, 
prayer for Nicole, please. Of Virginia, please pray for my father. He is back in the hospital. I know God is going to give him a miracle. Yes, he is. Richard, please pray for my sons and my business. And that business name is Tri-State got it i encourage you it's located off of naaman's road the tri-state shopping center there it's got great gospel music brother richard is a member of the church it's a wonderful business i give a shout out and i pray for a miracle increase in the name of jesus somebody praise god with me now and that his sons will receive what they need in jesus name stephen felix please pray for my wife jillian and my family please also pray for my usa citizenship appointment that we will uh, ed a dear friend of mine has a brother that has been married uh, about 30 years and his marriage is about to end also he and his wife need salvation pray for them father we pray for a miracle in that marriage in the somebody give the lord a praise right now thank you brother this says pray for tony who just had surgery yes we will this says uh from andre andre uh guterres andre is asking for protection for an uncle from COVID-19 who lives in Arizona. Brother Andre, we honor your faith. We pray for a hedge of protection right now around that uncle in the name of Jesus. Faith Trolla, please pray for financial help. Let's give another shout while I'm reading. How many are excited that all these people are watching us? Nearly over 14,000 views in a seven-day cycle every week, and people are believing for it. Somebody give a shout. The devil is a liar. Friend, those of you that just tuned in, it is time to believe for a miracle in your life. The Bible says pray. Uh, the, the Scripture says if you will pray for one another, you shall be healed. Now, listen to this faith. Pray for Jane, whose doctors uh, have told him that uh, they'll be on chemo he'll be on chemo the rest of uh, their life I say with God it's not impossible in the name of Jesus somebody shout with me hallelujah that she is coming out of this in the name of Jesus God we give you praise this says please pray for me and my family yes we will thank you brother Harmon this is from Lawrence Minor. Please pray for the Minor family, for Sharon Minor, Mike, and Lisa Minor. Colia says, pray for my friend. She got out of the hospital. She has blood clots. Tabby, please pray for the Cobbage family, mourning the loss of a loved one. Pray for uh, safety as we travel to North Carolina for the funeral this coming Saturday. Brandon Harris, please pray for me, my mom. My mom, mom, Sharon, and big cousin Dre, yes, we will, and also AJ. Sheila says, please continue to pray for Ronnie. It is working. She said, the prayers are working. Somebody shout amen. We're going to keep the prayer wheel turning. Lisa says, let's pray for school leaders as they make decisions about children returning to school. Pray for emotional wellness. Many people are battling depression during this season. Pray for the health and strength of Pastor Hare and the church staff. Amen. Pat says, please keep the Stanton family in prayer. Brother Stanton lost his battle to cancer yesterday and the family needs to be comforted. Yes, we will. Byron Brooks, please pray for my mother Irma who is trying to remain faithful uh, in spite of what the doctors are saying. This says pray for the family of Nishia, uh, yes, Nikesha Richardson, son Noel, Mother Tamika, Sister Deja, brothers Marquan, Karan, Sahim Richardson, nephew Karan Richardson Jr. They just lost a family member to gun violence. Ernesto, pray for Malou and, and Jonathan and Mike's friend. They all have cancer. 
in the name of Jesus were believing for a triple miracle. And Michelle said, my daughter has turned away from her curiosity with dark religion. She is actually wearing a bracelet with Jesus on it now. I want to give God praise. And listen to this. Michelle says, I also have a great new job. My kids and family are well. How about a shout out? God is in the miracle working business. Uh, Diana, please pray for my son, Sean, and his wife to find a home. The house they live in is up for sale. Are you ready to pray, saints of God? Those of you here, those of you in the drive-in church, and those of you watching, let's stretch our hands out to one another. Brother Harmon's coming with the anointing oil. And the Bible says, are there any sick among you? Are there any people with issues? Let them call for the elders of the church. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. That's the word of God. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we take this oil, and the church family anoints these with me and Brother Harmon together in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter, who is the Holy Ghost. And right now, we take authority over every sickness and every disease in the name of Jesus. Cancer, you got to go in Jesus' name. Renal failure, be healed in Jesus' name. COVID-19, be healed in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise that that one brother, Lord, he is delivered now from COVID. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. God, for the 94-year-old grandmother, we are believing in the name of Jesus uh, for her deliverance. Uh, and it said on the card she was not saved. Uh, my God, save her in the mighty name of Jesus right now. God, we pray for jobs to come in. We pray for finances to come in. God, we pray for households to be saved in the mighty name of Jesus. I feel led. Can we have a praise break right now? Somebody in the church start praising God. Help me, Brother Chris, if you would. Somebody watching me right now, raise up your hand. Sitting in that chair, on that couch, raise up your hand. I want everybody to give the Lord a wave off. And I, I feel we need to have a little praise break right now. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I look into this camera and I command the devil to loose people and to let them go. I bind depression. I bind discouragement. I bind family issues. I pray the finances will come into you. I pray that God will open up doors that no man can shut in the mighty name of Jesus. Those of you in this sanctuary, I pray whatever miracles that you need, that the power of God would come on you and touch you from the top of your head down to the soles of your feet right now. I decree and declare that this is your day of deliverance. This is your time of a miracle. Listen, you've been holding on. It's been months, but God said, I'm going to release it right now. It's being released. Somebody needs a shout. It's being released. It's being released. It's being released right now. Come on, shout it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody in this auditorium, God is touching you now. Everybody in your car, God is touching you now. Everybody watching, God is touching you now. One of our members, Brother Leonard Butcher, his mother is in the hospital. Kendra Spencer just put this through Facebook. Please pray for Nicole Butcher, Leonard's mom. Leonard is one of our ushers. Come on, let's believe that God's going to give his mother a turnaround. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray you'll give her a turnaround. God, I pray that Leonard will contact us and say that mom is all right. Everything is all right in Jesus' name. God, we give you praise. God, we thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus. I've seen a lot of miracles in my time, but the greatest miracle of all is when somebody gives their life to Jesus Christ. We always go to this cross that's on the platform. People have asked, Pastor, you always keep a cross nearby. Well, because without the cross, there is no Jesus 
There is no good news called the gospel that will save the sinner and set him free. I always like looking at the names on this cross. This is one of 100 crosses that we have that have been out on streets and cities over the many years. I always get thrilled seeing the names on the side. And let me see, and on the back and on the bottom, there probably would be 250, 300 names of people. When they got saved, you got to hear this now, they were not in a church. They were on a street. And they looked up and they said, Jesus, save my soul. And Jesus saved them, and they signed their name on the cross. Anybody in church, anybody in your car, anybody watching, to get saved, you don't have to join anything. You don't have to change your clothes. All you got to do is call on the Savior, and he'll save you. You know, somebody watching right now, you haven't slept much. Maybe you spent part of the night just drinking, trying to, trying to numb the pain and the loneliness. And somebody else watching right now, you've got an addiction. But I've got some good news. Jesus came uh, to set you free. Hallelujah. He died on the cross uh, to set you free. Uh, and the Lord is waiting on you. Listen to this. He doesn't care where you've been. He wants to know where you like to go with the rest of your life. And if you will call on Jesus, he will save you now. So I want to invite everybody in the church, everybody watching on Facebook and YouTube and anybody in their car listening now, I want us to look at this cross. I want us to stretch our hands out to the cross. And I'm going to say a prayer that I want you to repeat with me. I'm going to ask Sister Michelle to repeat it after me. And I, I believe if you'll say it and you'll mean it, you're going to find peace with God are you ready come on say it after me everybody say Jesus I want to say thanks for dying on the cross for all of my sins I can't save myself but I know you'll save me Jesus I know you love me in spite of everything I've done so I'm asking you Lord to wash my sin away to come into my life and to save me Lord put my name in your book of life right now right now right now I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior I am not lost but I am saved amen and amen how about a praise God? Oh, somebody give the Lord a loud shout. I felt in my spirit that somebody got saved and they turned their life over to Jesus. And the good news is this. The best is in front of you. The past is behind you. Paul said, this one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind. And now I reach ahead to the things that are before. you got to walk out of your past so that you can walk into your amazing future. And I say right now, the future is amazing for you. Amen and amen. Can we give the Lord one more praise? Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated, those that are in the sanctuary. And we want to say once again a welcome to everyone who is worshiping with us our family our new family of friends whether in church whether in the car in the drive-in church whether on Facebook live YouTube live we are family can I say that again we are God's family and how many know there is no distance in prayer amen I want to thank our prayer ministry team today. Let's give God a praise for them getting requests. And, and uh, I want to thank God for our music ministry, Brother Dana Saray, music director, and all the musicians, and Sister Michelle leading worship today. And I want to thank Brother Brian Atkins and Brother Al Woolfolk and Brother Phil Jefferson and Brother Chris Heckler and all of the ushers. Oh, come on, somebody give God a shout. It takes a team to do God's great 
work. Oh, together we stand in the name of Jesus. Well, we're coming to that point of the service where we get the opportunity to be able to give to the gospel work, to share the message of the good news of Jesus. I believe if there ever was a time that the church is needed, it's now. A church that will reach out, that will go beyond not only inside of the walls, but outside of the walls. And let people know that Jesus is the answer. Many people have thought, thanked me over the years saying, Pastor, keep reading the scriptures about giving. I think of all the single moms in our church that are so blessed and prosperous and their children have gone on to higher learning and higher education and, and, and that wasn't luck. Many of them have said to me, Pastor, I learned that when you tithe and when you give to share the good news of Jesus Christ, when you do what God says, God's going to do what he says. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, it's a sacred promise to the tither. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. The sacred promise to the tither, first of all, God said, you give me 10% of the money that I've blessed you with. He said, I'm going to pour you out a blessing. Secondly, he said, there will not be room enough to receive it. He said, I'm, I'm going to give you an increase. I, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to trust you with more. And thirdly, he said, I'm going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. I'm going to protect you and your loved ones. And that means that your children and your children's children will benefit because you made a right decision. And a right choice. In the book of Proverbs written by the wealthiest man who ever lived, the Song of Solomon, he gave a secret uh, about being so prosperous. And he said in Proverbs eleven twenty four, 24, he said, There is that scattereth and yet increaseth. And then he says, And there is the person that withholdeth more than they should, but it tends to poverty. He said, There are those that will be generous and help others and they will have increase but there will those who will hold on to everything they have but they will not live a blessed life look at the next verse the song of solomon writer he said the liberal soul shall be made fat the generous person will be blessed and he that watereth others shall be watered also himself I'm so glad that Faith City Family Church is an outreach church. I want to kind of set this up before I show you anything. I know that we are in the summer of salvation. and All during the months of summer, each week we are out into the streets with the cross, giving the gospel message, handing out PPE, the protective measures, going into areas that other people, they don't want to go to. Other areas where people have said things will never get better. But how many know the cross says things can get better? Going into areas where people have lost loved ones. Some of you remember that last Sunday, I told a story of a dear mother and her daughter walking down the street Somebody comes up with a gun, shoots the daughter right in front of the mother, shoots her right in her head. The mother wept on that phone to me when I talked to her. She said, you don't know what it's like to watch your baby die. I said, you just let that out. Go ahead. I was on the phone with her about a half hour, 40 minutes. How many know people need a, somebody that will listen to them? And she said, I'm numb. I don't want to eat. I, 
don't want to drink any water. I said, well, you've got to change that now. We're going to help you and begin to just pray with her and talk to her. And I said, how can we help you? And I said, we're getting ready to go to your area. It's something that we're getting ready to take the cross there. I said, would you like for us to do a memorial for your daughter? Oh, she said, oh, my. You don't know what that would mean. She said, nobody says my daughter's name. Nobody will ever know that she existed, that this happened. I said, well, they're going to know. But we're going to say your daughter's name. I said, we're going to, I'll tell you what, I'm going to combine it. We're going to do an outreach and a memorial service right on the place where she lost her life. Well, I'm here to tell you that God gave a mighty harvest in our summer of salvation outreach yesterday. Would you go with me right now out on the streets? Go with me. Yes. There you see the cross, the flowers. There we're handing out the mask, the gloves, telling people you need to use wisdom. Don't you go around without a mask. Don't you go around without the gloves. Even the little ones, we're trying to train them because in many of these areas, they don't wear masks. And then our team, I want to thank God for the outreach team. They put together a memorial wall. Look at that. And they put pictures on that wall right out on the street of this precious young lady who left behind a four-year-old little boy. The love that was shown on that wall of remembrance yesterday out on the corner. This touches me. You see, this is the mother of the girl who was shot in front of her eyes. And our outreach team had to take their time. The mother almost passed out, walking to the cross on the corner. We're looking at pictures. God love her. Bless her, Jesus. There's the mom who got a chair for her, and she got so emotional she had to touch the pictures of her daughter. Reached over and gave her a kiss. Let me tell you, pain is real. Pain is real in this world. What would Jesus do? He'd go out on the street, and he'd try to give people some comfort and some hope. What a great crowd came. We preached the gospel message. People said the sinner's prayer. They got saved. There's one of her, there's her sister right there crying, looking at her sister's pictures. But when we preached that gospel message, people not only got saved, but they signed their name on the cross saying, Today I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I'm not lost anymore. Jesus saved my soul. Somebody ought to shout, thank you, Jesus. And there's mom, the mom of the girl who lost her life, signing her name on that cross. We turned the corner into a church. We turned that street into a memorial. The Bible says, he that when souls is wise, there's the balloon release, remembering this precious young lady who I believe is in a better place. The little children looking up into the sky. How many know it was good those children heard the gospel message? And we just comforted the family. There's the mother giving thanks to Faith City to reach gospel to Brother Harmon, to all the team, everybody supporting the ministry, the packages of love going out to people with the gospel tracks, the cross necklaces, even to the little ones. We're going to continue to help this family. You might say, where's the four-year-old? They couldn't bring him out. He has some serious health issues. But how many know everything is going to be all right somehow, some way? 
that. So, Lord, we give you praise. We pray for the Richardson family in Jesus' name. A summer of salvation. It's going to take more than just a preacher getting up behind a pulpit and preaching his sermon. We thank God for the music and the songs, but it's going to take more than that. you got to go out to where the hurt is. Shootings are at an all-time high. We're going to be out. Every single week is our plan during the summer. Starting out handing out the masks, the gloves, promoting that Jesus is coming to the neighborhood. I believe that by the end of the summer, I'm claiming that thousands will be saved because we took time to go outside the church walls to help somebody. And so today, when you give, would you remember the Summer of Salvation Outreach? It takes a lot of finances to do this. Oh, it'd be easier because right now it's not easy for the church to make it. People ask me, how's the church making it? I say, a day at a time. We go from week to week. The big electric bill comes in the mail. We're running eight five-ton air conditioning units. Think about it. They're all five-ton. I can't imagine what the bill will be. I'm not worried about it. God will make a way. Few can go to church. But the devil is a liar. God is a way maker. Can I hear a praise the Lord? Pastor, where are you going with this? I want to ask you, would you make sure that you pay your tithe? I would hate to see us not be able to continue to go out because we're in the middle of the COVID-19 I would hate to see things get so tight where we're not unable to, to do any of the ministry that we're called to do. And I'm saying in the name of Jesus, it's not happened thus far. And I say by faith, it's not going to happen in Jesus' mighty name. But we need you to pay your tithe. Could you give some special outreach offerings to keep us going? And I believe that even though you can't go out on the streets... But knowing that you can give, you can tithe, you can give special offerings, I want you to know that you're going to share in every soul that gets saved. And so before I pray, we've made it very easy to give. It's very convenient, various different ways. People seem to be very pleased with this. You can text to give at that number. You call that number. It Put you right into a link that's secure, that's safe. You can tithe. You can give special outreach offerings. It sure would be great today to get about 28, 29, 30 special outreach offerings of $100 or more. We really need it right now, but I'm just putting that out there. Number two, you can use the cash app. The dollar sign, Faith City FC2, lower or uppercase, doesn't matter. But you must add the dollar sign or faithcitynow.com. Again, all these safe, secure, easy, quick to use. You can also send your tithes and offerings right to the door of the church. Faith City Family Church, 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 19702, 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 19702. I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask everybody in the church, everybody watching, everybody in the drive in church, would you do your very best to help the summer of salvation, Father? In the name of Jesus, we want to say thank you for the privilege and the honor to be out on the streets yesterday serving the community. When people ask, who's this from, who's this, who's that, Lord, we don't say the name of a church or an organization or a preacher. We always say it's all from Jesus. Jesus cares. Oh, Lord, continue to comfort that mother and the five siblings and that little grand boy, four years old, who lost his mother. Heal his body, oh, God, that's so sick. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that everybody under the sound of my voice will say, you know what? I want to be a part of something like this. I'm going to make sure I pay my tithe, Lord. I'm going to make sure I give some special outreach offerings. And, Lord, I pray that you would raise up, God, a number of people who would say, you know what, I believe I can do a special outreach offering, and I'm going to do it because I'm going to be a part of the summer of salvation as we promote justice and peace and unity on our streets. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Once again, to everyone here, thank you. To every you, all of you watching, thank you. To those in your car, thank you. We love you. God bless you. Amen. Everything will be all right. Keep your trust in Jesus. I want to remind everyone that it's not too late to get in your prayer request at the close of the service. We always pray over the additional requests that come in. Maybe you just joined us and simply go to Faith City Family Church Facebook, the comment section or the send message section or the YouTube chat section, and we will pray. I want to get those requests in my hand because God is answering prayer. Our team is ready to continue to take your prayer request and believe for miracles. What an honor that it's been thus far to congratulate and give honor to nearly 100 graduates. My goodness, and the walls of honor are filling up. I want to ask Brother BK if he would not mind just to kind of put up a little bit of close-up of our wall of honor. We'll be doing a close-up of the second one very, very soon. But we are so proud of all. Would you put your hands together? Come on. Let's give a loud praise to the Lord. I want them to hear it on Facebook. Come on. I want them to hear it on YouTube. Come on. A little bit louder. Somebody cheer for them right now. Precious, precious, precious young people. We are so proud of each and every one of them. Today, we want to take a moment before we get into the word of the Lord and share some things that are coming up. I would like to honor at this time three more graduates that have come in. Now, you might say, before I do this, you might say, well, hold on. I'd like to get honored. Or I have a son or a grandson or a granddaughter. I've got a niece, a nephew. I would like to give them props. It's so easy to do. Here's how you do it. To honor graduates, you simply email the church office a picture of yourself, your name, the name of your school to faithcityoffice at gmail.com. Faithcityoffice at gmail.com. And we'll take care of everything else. And thousands of people will hear your name. And see your picture as we give you the props you deserve. 
after each name, I want us to give a big cheer and a praise the Lord. I want to begin right now with Amari Williams, First State Montessori School, Wilmington, Delaware. Give it up for our sister. Olivia Emmett, Middletown High School. This is from the News Journal. Spoke to her class. And her twin brother, Cameron Emmett of Middletown High School, also addressed the graduating class. How about a praise the Lord? Let's give a big loud praise for these three additional graduates. Amen and amen. So we want to continue, as we said, we said through the month of July, because of the COVID-19 interruption, we would continue to honor graduates. We invite you to be a part. We want to encourage everybody to remember our worship options. You can come now to the church. The church is open, 9, 11, Wednesdays at 7. Or in your car, we call it the drive-in church on 97.7 FM or, of course, YouTube Live and Facebook Live. Speaking of services, there is a very special anointing service coming up on Sunday, July the 26th at 9 a.m., 11 a.m. and 11 a.m. Everyone present on the church property will be distributed a bottle of anointing oil. But if you're joining in by Facebook and YouTube Live, all you have to do to get your own personal bottle of anointing oil for that special Sunday, can you believe it, that's next Sunday, is simply do this. Email the church office. And I want you to see this on the screen, those of you watching on YouTube and Facebook. Email the church office, faithcityoffice at gmail.com for your free anointing oil. And the staff will get it out in the mail. We can get it to you before next Sunday. If you will email us, you can do that 24 hours a day, simply faithcityoffice at gmail.com. And we want you to have that oil. It's going to be powerful. And also, I want to remind everybody to stay encouraged by listening to Reach Gospel Radio. How many thank God for Reach Gospel Radio? Can I hear an amen for that? Great gospel music, 24-7. And uh, we encourage you to be blessed by Reach Gospel. And uh, Wednesday at 7, join us once again. In praying for the message today, I was saying, Oh God, what would you have? I always pray. I'm always seeking the Lord because you know when you ask God, He'll answer you. When you pray, God listens. And I feel that God has given this message for us today strategically for this time that we're in. The message is entitled, How to Experience a Victorious Faith. How to Experience a Victorious Faith. Once again, I want to remind everyone, it's not too late to get your prayer request in. Faith City Family Church Facebook, the comments section or send message section, YouTube, the chat section. We'll be praying at the close. The Bible said every man is, and woman is given a measure of faith. So everyone that is born receives a measure of faith. But other people have different levels of faith than others do. And it's amazing that other people get different levels of responses than other Christians do because some people learn how to develop their faith. Today, I want to preach on how to have not just a measure of faith, but how to have a victorious faith. I want to share with you 10 keys out of the Word of God, beginning with key number one. If we will do these things, our faith is going to go higher into the level of a victorious faith. And I believe that our miracles are going to increase. Our answers to prayer are going to increase. Key number one, keep the right perspective concerning the challenges that you face. How many times have Christians gotten off the beaten path to get to their place of a miracle because they allowed the devil to affect their perspective? 
I'm here to tell you that things aren't as bad as they seem. I'm here to tell you that even though it might seem bad today, there is help on the way. I'm here to tell you that no matter how hopeless it is, with God in the mix, it's never hopeless. Can I hear a loud amen? The Bible says when it comes to a perspective, how you look at your troubles that you're going through, it says look at them this way. In James chapter 1, verse number 12, it says God blesses those. Now here's the attitude we're supposed to take. Who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those that love him. God blesses those who patiently endure. I, I bet if I pass the microphone around to those here, those watching, those listening right now, I believe that you could say, I am in a test of some kind right now. But I'm telling you, if you will patiently endure and wait on God, God is going to strengthen your faith. The Bible said, they that wait on God will renew their strength. So don't give up. Don't get discouraged. I'm telling you by faith, you'll come out of this thing stronger than when you went into it. Can I hear a praise God from somebody right now? How to experience a victorious faith. Key number two, put on God's spiritual armor every day. Put on God's spiritual armor every day. Some people think, well, if I go to church and, and I remember to do that, and no, it needs to be a routine. The, the Bible says the, the power comes in the routine. We don't just pray on Sunday. We're supposed to pray every day. The Bible said pray without ceasing. So every day, put on God's spiritual armor. Ephesians 6, 11 says put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. You might say, what is the armor of God? Read Ephesians, the sixth chapter. It talks about the helmet of salvation. It talks about the sword of the spirit. It talks about taking on the shield of faith. It talks about your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and your loins being girt about with truth. If you will put on the armor of God every day, you are going to make it that much more difficult for the devil to have his way and his agenda in your life. So to every man and woman is given the measure of faith. But how can you experience a victorious faith? Ten Bible keys. Number one, we said keep the right perspective concerning the challenges that you face. Key number two, put on God's spiritual armor every day. Number three, refuse, and that's a key word right there. Refuse to allow worry to dominate your life. Boy, is that one that's easily said. We're so quick we can tell everybody, don't you worry about it. Don't worry. But isn't it something? When the day comes to a close and things get quiet and all of the sudden thoughts may try to come your way to get you in a zone of worry. But I'm so happy that the Bible says I don't have to live a life of worry. The Bible said, in, in, and I believe it's Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. Uh, people will look at you and say, I can't believe how you're so calm, how you're so cool, how you're so collect. Well, it's really not me, but it's the God who's living in me. I turned it all over to God because I learned that worrying about it is not going to fix it. But if I will pray and trust, I will have peace. David said in Psalm 138, verse number 7. And the reason I chose this verse is in case somebody 
in church, somebody watching, somebody in your car, the devil's thinking, well, you, you poor little old thing. Look at all of the drama you're having. Look at all of the problems you're having. No, listen, everybody's got trouble and everybody's got problems. And even David, the king, and the songwriter, and the psalmist, and the giant killer, and the man who wrestled the lion said, though I am surrounded by troubles, you will protect me. How many know that's a good attitude? From the anger of my enemies, you will protect me. You reach out your hand, and the power of your right hand saves me. I want everybody to read this with me out loud. Those of you watching, those of you in your church, in the car, read it out loud. Come on, are you ready? Let's do it together. Though I am surrounded by troubles, you will protect me from the anger of my enemies. You reach out your hand. And the power of your right hand saves me. Can I hear a praise God? Somebody needs to hang that verse up somewhere in your house and read it every day. Even though you feel like you're surrounded by problems, the Bible says in Psalms, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so God surrounds his people henceforth, even and forevermore. I'm talking about how to experience a victorious faith. Key number four is so critical. Pray for God's wisdom concerning your relationships. And that is, one of the, that is one of the trickiest areas many times for believers because the devil knows how to come as an angel of light. I want to remind everybody that the devil attends church. Can I get some amens? The devil preys on people. He, he, he tries to deceive, and, and, we, and we've got to try the spirits, as the Bible says. Not everybody that carries the Bible reads the Bible. Not everybody that says Jesus lives for Jesus. And in the book of Romans, Paul warned the body of Christ. In Romans 16, verse 17, he said, And now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who calls divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. What's the last four words say? Somebody tell me. Stay away from them. The next verse reads, such people are not serving Christ our Lord. They are serving their own personal interest by smooth talk and glowing words. They deceive innocent people. Proverbs chapter 13 Verse 20 says, who your friends are can be a life and death matter. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. That's the NLT. The King James Version says, he that walketh with wise shall be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Running with the wrong people could cost you your life, could cost you your future, could cost you your destiny that God has for you. But I speak over you in the name of Jesus that God is making you strong to walk away from what you need to walk away from, to wait on what you're supposed to wait on, and to walk into what God wants you to walk into can I hear an amen from somebody right now how to experience a victorious faith key number five be serious about overcoming some people mean well but they don't finally dig down and get serious with it friend if you're going to get anywhere in your life you got to get serious if you're going to make some adjustments in your health you got to get serious if you're going to make some real change in your life, we all know we, we've got to get serious about it. And the Bible says that if you want to overcome, you've got to get serious. And Christians who have become serious about overcoming share this verse in common. They live out Galatians chapter 6, verse number 9. Let's test to see if you and I are living out this in our lives as we read Galatians 6, 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. You see, the devil wants to wear me down and wear you down where we want to give up. We want to just say, well, you know what? I, I'm, this isn't worth it. And the pushback is too strong. It seems that the more I try to push forward, the more I get pushed back. But you've got to make up your mind, devil, come hell or high water, I'm going to be everything God says I can be. I'm going to push through everything I've got to push through because he said he would not leave me and he will not forsake me. Do not get tired of doing what is good because at just the right time, 
How many believe God has a, an appointed time for your miracle? How many believe God has an appointed time for your breakthrough and your blessing? It says if you'll just keep one foot in front of the other at the right time, all of the sudden we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. So I'm seeing the characteristics of somebody with a strong faith. I will not get tired of doing what is good. I will trust God that his timing is the best timing, and I believe for a harvest of blessing is coming because I will not give up. Can I hear a loud amen from somebody? How many believe that your harvest is on the way? Let's review thus far our message today, how to experience not just faith, but rather a victorious faith. Number one, important keys. Keep the right perspective concerning the challenges that you face. Key number two, put on God's spiritual armor every day. Key number three, refuse to allow worry to dominate your life. Key number four, pray for God's wisdom concerning your relationships. Number five, be serious about overcoming. And number six, be selective in what you feed your mind. Be extremely selective. Listen, I mean, listen, you need to take this so serious. That means if you've got to drive to work another way to keep your peace, take another route. You need to protect your peace. You need to protect the anointing that God has on your life. You need to protect your thought life in the name of Jesus because what you become in your mind is what you eventually become in time. You've got to control what is going on in your head. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, many of you will recognize this. It says, brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix and focus your thoughts. Discipline on the things that are true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Friend, if you want good rest, feed your mind with things that are going to give you rest. If you want peace, get around people who promote peace. And I promise you, you get your thoughts under control, it's going to make a whole new you. People won't even recognize you. Why? Because as you think in your heart, that's exactly what you will become. I want everybody to say this after me. Say, in the name of Jesus, I think thoughts of peace, thoughts of blessing, thoughts of serving, thoughts of overcoming, Thoughts of prospering, that's my world because God is in my world. God is able, hallelujah. Raise your hand and praise him and shout, God is able, God is able. Start confessing things over those that you're praying for and watch what God can do. Number seven, refuse to panic, wait, and trust in God. Notice this key and chronological order of how it's stated. Refuse to panic. How can you wait and trust in God when you have chosen to fall apart? I have seen people receive bad news. And the type of work I'm in, I could write, I could probably write a 500-page devotional book of the things I've seen over the many years being called to the emergency ward of a hospital having to walk in with the family and their loved one is gone. They're just laying there and I'm standing there while they're saying goodbye for the last time. I'm telling you, there's power in the name of Jesus. I have seen people, and listen, you don't know how you handle something till you go through it, but I've seen some miracles. I've seen some people in very dire moments begin to open up their mouth and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, you are in this room with us right now. I have seen the atmosphere change from panic to praise, from worry to peace, because there's power in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking to somebody, not only in church, but you're watching me right now, and you have a lot of conflict in your living space. God is telling me to tell you, I believe this, you need to walk around in every square inch of where you live, and you need to speak the name of Jesus, you need to speak peace, 
You need to speak tranquility. You need to say, we get along in this house. The fussing and the conflict stops right now in the name of Jesus. And put the name of Jesus in every room of where you live. Can I hear an amen? Stop falling apart. Stop panicking. Instead, wait and trust in God. Does it work? The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17, does this process actually work? Well, in this book in the Bible, the people of God find themselves at the point of panic. They finally came up against an alien army that was way above their ability, and they were looking at death in the face. But all of a sudden, God gives them an option and says, you can choose fear or you can choose faith. You can choose to believe my report or you can choose to believe the report of what your eyes are telling you. And God says, if you'll believe me, here is the outcome. But you will not even need to fight. Simply take your positions and then stand still. And watch the Lord's victory. You know, somebody needs to give God a shout right now. God is telling somebody, you need to stand still and take your position of faith. Because God is about to save your child. God is about to turn that around. God is about to give you that miracle. But you ought to take your position, stand still, and watch the Lord's victory. It reads on, he says, for he is with you. Somebody needs to shout, God is with me. It goes on to read, oh, oh, people of Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. I feel a shout coming on right now. Refuse to panic, but put your trust in God. And while you're trusting God, God is at work. Even though you get a phone call and it's a bad report, keep your trust in God and wait on the Lord. Because just because you got a bad report today doesn't mean that God can't turn it around by tomorrow. We serve a God who is a God of miracles and a God of a turnaround. Isaiah 40, 31. Uh, position yourself to keep on waiting because those who trust in the Lord and wait on him uh, will find new strength uh, while you're in the valley you will soar on wings like eagles uh, you will keep on running when others faint uh, you will not grow weary and you will press on and you will make it to your destination how many believe that God is giving you a victorious faith right now I speak over you you have a victorious faith uh, you have a victorious faith you have a victorious faith. You are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah, Jesus. I feel victory on this message today. Our message, how to experience a victorious faith. The next key, key number eight, you cannot move forward if you get stuck in the past. Just make sure you remember two words or three words, really. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Everybody's going to have stuff happen. Keep it moving. Easy to say, another thing to do. But if you'll keep it behind you, the past behind you, and keep walking in this direction by faith and reaching out to what God has next, I'm telling you, God can put something in front of you that can make up for every tear, make up for every loss that you ever had in your life. Can I hear an amen? You just got to say no to the devil when he says it's time to look back. No, it's time to look to the future with victory. Key number nine, choose to see your struggle as only a part of your life's journey. Everybody's going to have struggle, but it will not be always. This too shall pass. It's just a part of the chapter in the book of your life. Second Chronicles chapter 4, verse 17, as our musicians come. The king had cast them in clay moles in the Jordan Valley between Succoth and Zeran. But the next verse goes on to read, read it later. It says that God showed up, changed the situation, and something became that was bad turned into something good. How many believe your bad is going to turn into something good? 
that means God's going to teach you something through it. You're going to learn something that's going to save you a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. You're going to learn something that just might make you the most successful person you never dreamed of becoming because your struggle is only a part of your life's journey. And I got to add this. If you're going to soar, sometimes you got to go through some valleys. Some of the most successful people who ever lived said, I look back and now I see why God let me go through it. If I didn't go through that, I would not be doing this. And then finally, key number 10 of our message, how to experience a victorious faith, is no matter what it looks like, believe that God has an after this. Brother Dana, maybe you could hit that on the keys in the background. There will be glory. After this, God has an after this. Get your prayer request in right now. Some of you need an after this. Faith City Family Church Facebook, the uh, comment or send message section, YouTube, the chat section. There's an after this coming for you. There's something good on the other side. It might be painful today, but your miracle is on the way. It worked for Job and it's going to work for you. In Job 42.10, the Bible said that Job was in the worst season of his life, but when Job prayed for his friends, God said, get your mind off your trouble and pray for somebody else. The Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him, that's Job, twice as much as he had before. So the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life. How many will raise up your hand and say in the second half of your life, you're going to have more, your life. listen, the next part of your life is going to be better than the former part. I need some amens. I need somebody to grab onto this. I need you to open up your mouth and say, the next part of my life is going to be the best part of my life in the name of Jesus. Physically, spiritually, financially, in every dimension mention of my life. Somebody said, can God do it? God does it. It says the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life even more than in the beginning. For now he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 teams of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He ended up double for all his trouble. And if God did it for him, God is no respecter of person. I know that God can do it for you. Can we give the Lord a shout right now? I believe that God is giving you a victorious faith. Yes, he is. Those in the sanctuary, would you please stand with us at this time as we get ready to close? Brother Harmon is coming with any other requests that have continued to come in. Our prayer ministry box, the oil, and we're going to pray for victories, for answers to prayer. We're going to believe that you're going to have a victorious faith. And I want to speak this, and I hope you'll receive it. I want to believe that over the next seven days, God, just like the walls of Jericho came down in seven days, that seven days from now, you're going to have praise reports. How many will receive that right now in the name of Jesus? Thank you, Brother Harmon. Hallelujah. Carol Charleston, please pray for me to receive a financial blessing because I'm out of work due to illness that God will increase my territory in Jesus' mighty name. Pray for my sons, Derek and Raymond, to come home. Keep them safe and protected until released. Uh, I get, she said, submitted by a loving mom. Yes. This says, please pray for salvation and deliverance for my daughter and nephew. This says, uh, please pray for my daughter as she searches for a new job. Please pray for my son as he travels home from his base. He has not been home in two years. Pray for my co-worker. She recently lost her cousin to suicide. My God. And this says uh, from many that she is praying for healing prayer. She wants to get back into church. Amen, many. From, yes, God bless you. Uh, Carmen, thank you for praying for my niece, Antoinette, who was hospitalized in South Carolina. She will be discharged tomorrow. God is great. How about a praise the Lord, a praise report? God went all the way down to South Carolina on that one. Yes, he did, Carmen. Yes, he did. Thank 
Seven days. It was seven days, wasn't it? Oh, it was seven days ago. We prayed for that. How many will raise your hand and say, I believe for a seven-day miracle from my life? And then finally, from uh, Ken Kenyatta, thanks for your prayers. My brother Sean is getting help for drugs and his mental health. There's another praise the Lord. Things are getting better. Would you stretch your hands out as Brother Harmon comes? Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we take the oil, O oh God, and we faithfully anoint every single request that has come in during this particular service, O oh God. Lord, I pray that you will heal, deliver, save, and set free. God, we pray that people, Lord, will see this seven-day turnaround in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, they're going to be getting their praise reports in. Uh, God, we believe for a household salvation. God, we believe for what the devil said won't happen. God, when God says yes, uh, when Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. Hallelujah. God, we believe for the yes today for every one of these prayer requests. Uh, and now I stretch forth my hand uh, to everybody in the sanctuary, everybody watching on Facebook and YouTube uh, or listening in your car. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. And may the Lord give you his peace. In the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter who is the Holy Ghost. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. How about a loud praise for the Lord? God bless you. God bless you. Amen and Amen.